in three, two, one. Go. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 197. On this show, we showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else the gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products on an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace, from the Firearms Radio Network, your source for broadcasts for shooters, hunters, and all things firearms related. In this show, we'll be discussing the Ruger American Ranch in 7.62x39 and the Vortex Strike Eagle 1-8x24, and it appears that Zane brought us a review of the new Glock Gen 5. So we will have that also. So tonight on the podcast, we have with us Sean, because I guess he wanted to take a month off or something, uh, Rob and Zane, who might float away next week, and Tony. Hmm. So what did you guys do? (laughs) What did you guys do in guns? Firearms, whatever you want to call it. Well, I'll go ahead and start off because uh, Zane's whole thing of what he did in firearms this week is actually his review. Um, <clears throat> um, I actually went skeet shooting and trap shooting yesterday. Also last week I went and took the 357 Magnum Henry lever action. Trap Boy, shooting? I yeah, I took, I took a trap <laughs> shooting because I like to do it on a whole nother level um, that y'all just can't get on. So got it. Uh, yeah, no, I got, uh, yeah, I actually took the Henry out, um, just to shoot some groups of 25, see what it groups like with 30, 38 ammo and also 357 ammo. Um, that was fun. I need to get some more trigger time on it so I can really start working with those buckhorn sights. I'm really amazed at how little full 357 loads <laughs> feel coming out of a carbine. It's like nothing. And yet it gives that carbine like the power of a 3030. That 357 round kind of hits like a 3030 within like 100 yards. It's awesome. Um, what else did I do? Oh, got to take my little, got to go skeet and trap shooting with guys who had actually expensive shotguns. I took my youth model um, Stevens shotgun out that cost me like $127. And these guys had out like the CZ over unders, Browning over and unders. Uh, Benelli, Vinci's, and I had a lot of fun shooting really expensive guns that I'll probably never, ever own. And I scored higher with my Stevens 20-gauge youth model pump action than I did with any of the really expensive guns. But that Benelli semi-auto really opened my eyes. And for something that costs between $900 and $1,300, it makes me actually go, hey, that's probably a deal. That might be one thing in my future down the road. And yeah, that's what I did this week. Yeah, semi-auto shotguns are kind of nice after you. If you've been shooting like a pump or something your whole life and you shoot one, you're like, oh, I don't know. what. Why did I not get one no, of these I, 20 years ago? Well, no, I shot, I've shot the uh, – hey, what, what does Dan have, Sean? He had um, Super – the Super Vinci? Uh, no, no the, he's got Rem- a Remington. Versamax. Uh, Versamax, that's it. Yeah, the Versamax was sweet, but comparatively, uh, no, the, the Nelly Vinci is much lighter, much smoother, and much more fun to shoot. Oh, yeah, I've got a Nelly Vinci. That's a nice shotgun. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, Rating 2, I think, smoothest shotgun I've shot so far. Is the Benelli Vinci? Um, Sean's <laughs> Sean's twelve gauge Sega is a totally different monster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the Vinci's also yeah. got a really nice recoil system in there too. To throw it. <clears throat> yeah, it does. I mean, the recoil from the twelve gauge Vinci was softer than the recoil from the youth model twenty gauge pump. Yeah, and is also also a half a pound lighter than the youth model shotgun. Yeah, and designed it's also for children. Three or four times the price? No, it's about ten times the price. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's 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 ten times the price? I mean, that's like ten guns or what? <laughs> like twenty high points. With, <laughs> instead of buying a Vinci, I can equip an entire trap team 
Rick <laughs> Stevens. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, who's next on the list? Okay, I'll go. Nope. Awesome. I, Hit it. I, I spent the weekend at uh, the Broxton Bridge Plantation. I think I dropped a link to it in the show notes. It's a little, it's a, what, Civil War era plantation, I guess. And it's really kind of, uh, really got a cobbled together house you can uh, rent for about 100 bucks a night for a room. And it's literally two houses that they kind of like moved together and built a connecting be connector between them. It's really nice, really quaint or old timey. And I did some hog hunting and then do what? I did some hog I hunting think that was and a... literally within a half hour of getting out there into the uh, into the uh, woods, it's like this stupid hog walks out in front of me. I said, okay, if you're dumb enough to walk in front of me, I'll call you dinner. And I, I actually took it out with my uh, 45 pistol. I didn't even bother to use my rifle on the darn thing. It was so close. Mm -hmm. So... So nice. got, at least it was one shot, one kill, and then had it processed. And now I just got to get it to the uh, butcher to uh, finish the job. Get some bacon made. Mm, oh, bacon, ham hocks, you name it. I mean, I took the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the, the stuff off the gum. I forgot the, the cuts. The really good cuts off the uh, off The, the loins or the back Yeah, the loins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we took both those, those off, and I've already packaged those up, but... Get the rest of it in there and have it professionally uh, processed. Nice. But, no, I mean I had a really good time. I mean, it's like I said, it's about a hundred bucks a night. It's just a nice little place to go and uh, do some hunting and just hang out with the family because I had family come down. We kind of met there because it was a central place for the both sweet. of them. Sweet, mm. sweet, sweet. Now, of course, Tony, I'm figure what out you do? This stupid hurricane coming up. No. Uh, well, that kind of depends on where it's going to land, right? Oh, God only knows right now. It's Tuesday night, and they have no clue. No, great. Yeah, I feel <laughs> sorry. For that. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> only so much that I feel sorry for you that I'm just glad it's not me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Possibly. Possibly. It sounds like you. Who needs enemies? Exactly. I've been told that a lot lately. <laughs> hey man, you got that sweet new little camp stove that you got from me a couple weeks ago. I, I do. You're and all set up. Of, I got I got it set up. I got plenty of fuel for it. I got about a gallon and a half of fuel for that. Um, nice. I've got. Hmm? Oh yeah, I got I got uh, all, all all that wise food I bought from you a couple months ago or about That's a month awesome. ago. Oh, I'm, I'm I, ready, man. I've got like 50, 60 gallons of water already stashed away in the house. I'm I'm. I am not a prepper, but I am prepared. Right. Well, let's let's hope you don't need any of it. Let's hope it uh, pretty oh, much. Yeah. So yeah. some kind of miracle happens and Irma never shows up. But yeah, I hear Zane has water too. He's going to sell it for like ten bucks a bottle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Price gal, <gouge> everybody. <laughs> hey, it's not if you got it, you want it. That's it. That's called supply and demand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I couldn't resist. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, uh, i got to get the name of that plantation down so I can go and stay in the shack on the plantation. It will never, ever, ever. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, ever. The link's in the show notes, Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My wife and I went on vacation <clears throat> back to where I'm from. And we was looking for a decent hotel. And I was like, hey, when did they build a Marriott? Oh, okay. Oh, they got a Marriott? Let's check into the Marriott. My wife clicks on it and says, hey, here it is, a Marriott on Berry Hill Plantation. I'm like, nope, 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 not, nope, nope, not, nope. I am not paying to stay on a plantation. <laughs> well, there will be you know, smoke you, you coming out of the it. graveyard. <laughs> what was that? You could barter for it. You don't necessarily I, have to pay. I ain't <laughs> bartering for it. I think I paid ahead of time. <laughs> I'm looking at that as a prepay room. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Just say it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, let's, let's cut this off before we get too deep into this. Yeah. So who, who's, who's up next? I guess. Uh, yeah, I was gonna uh, say because what I, what I did is kind of the main topic. So, 
Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it. Okay, so that I thought I must so. apologize for staying in such an offensive place over the weekend. <laughs> oh man, just have fun. I'm just making fun of the fact that you know somehow there are tear down statues, but you can stay on plantation still. Oh, <laughs> and and, uh, and we're saying, Tony, you can stay there too. <laughs> uh, oh no, I can't. Uh, this, this would have been a fun show had it ever hit episode 200. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're done. It's a shame, it, it's a shame it's going to go off the air now. Uh, uh, Episode 197 yeah. dies right out. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Can I, we I, at least hold off to 199 before we kill it? What's this text Sean just sent? This, the Gun and Gear Review podcast has been canceled. <laughs> oh. Tell him new phone, oh, who this? Wait a minute, Sam. New podcast, who this? By default, man. Let's see. New nope, he hasn't that, texted me yet. Or the uh, <laughs> the uh, the Conor McGregor clip where he's asking who who's that guy. <clears throat> yeah, that's not safe for airing no. the program. But yeah, yeah, there you go. I well, man, I'm I'm done. I've been perforating rabbits out in the yard and and doing preparedness stuff. Canning. My wife's been canning food, and we've been harvesting vegetables out of the, the big garden and all that stuff. But, um, oh, oh, and I'm helping my two-year-old build an AR-15 because it's easy enough that a two-year-old can do it. Oh, sweet. sweet. Yeah. yeah. He got really geeked up about, you know, because he, he's always involved anytime I have packages coming in and stuff. He's he's our uh, <laughs> our receiving yeah. manager at Black Bag Resources. So he, uh, uh, he got real excited about a box and he was looking at the parts and stuff. And he goes, Daddy, we build it. We build a gun. And I went, yeah, let's do that. I had an extra lower sitting around and we started doing it. And, you know, every couple of days we put another piece in, he gets really excited about it and we're going over all the safety stuff and yeah, he's only two, but I figured that's the part that he can process at that age. So, so Hey, you need nice. some more uh, pistol grips? <laughs> no, no, I'm good. But Tony could use them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Tony's got it. Oh. You know what? When you send them to Tony, mark the box reparations. <laughs> <laughs> so if we, so if we send him, if we send Tony ammo, what do we mark the box? Uh, Mo reparations. Oh, I thought it was like deflations or something. No, no, Mo rep, <laughs> Mo reparations is what happens when you send Magpul stuff. Oh. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. I see, Somebody's I, going, I don't get that. I, I see what you did there. <laughs> I, yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, so, so, so real quick, one of my stalkers is texting me and uh, she wants me to give her a shout out. So hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Say hi, to Kim. hi, Kim. Hi to Kim. That's yep. it. That's all you get, Kim. Wait a minute. Wait. Hey, Zane hi. and Tony didn't say hi to Kim. I said hi. How you doing, rude. Kim? How you doing, Kim? I'm being hard. I'm being. I'm playing hard to get. <laughs> For one, hard to get, Tony. What have you ever played? Where has this show show gone tonight? I don't Down know. Man. Okay. Well, I hey, last week, Ryan Cross did say that uh, they do like us. The, our, our fans do like it when we kind of banter back and forth. So we turned it up this week. You well, know, I'm drinking coffee instead of beer this week, so that could be part of the problem. I'm drinking beer instead of. Water this week, so that might be the problem. <laughs> yeah, and I'm already halfway through some moonshine, so don't worry about it. Uh, I guess I can. Des- uh, let's see. What did I do in guns? I've been. I've been to the range. You're asking to tell him. I'm <laughs> yeah. telling. He says I'm he's drinking coffee and beer. It's I'm really insuring. Oh, he's just you know, asking the answers his own questions. I'm speaking in the third person. Whatever it is. Yeah, I don't like him either. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Let's see. I've been to the range twice working on my working on my SBR that decides it doesn't want to run now that I have done a bunch of stuff to it. So I think I don't know what the heck's wrong with that thing now, but it's I'm thinking it's the stock. I did drill a hole in the buffer tube that didn't have one. Oh. And I took it out today and it still had problems. But of course yeah. Yeah. Why don't you send it to me and I'll get it working? Yeah. That's too much paperwork. It would take you a year to get it. I just said send it to me. Uh, I didn't say paperwork. Well, the thing is, is I know I can get it back running. All I got to do is put all the same parts back on it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, but that didn't we seem to help. Factory default. Yeah. Uh, so I put a different buffer tube on it today, and I guess it's off to the range again. I go and see if it works that way. But besides that, I haven't really done too much in guns, but try that thing out and then try it out some more and then try it out some more. So, yeah, that's the fun I had. On to the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least the range is close. That's all I can say. There you go. Yep. On to the announcements. Bandwidth sponsor is still Patriot Patch because for some reason I think Jake still likes us. Ryan, I'm not sure about. Uh, oh, there's, for yeah, there's new patches for pre-order. Uh, I think the only one I know is the Magpul. Oh, wait, not Magpul. The FDE coloring crayons that are all different colors. Uh, I had to explain that to my wife. <laughs> yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me. I, I would have to explain it to mine too. So, And I think there's an AR-15 podcast patch for pre-order. Uh, the listener support program, you can go to firearmsradio.tv slash pledge gun gear review podcast if you want to pledge your support for this podcast. Oh, you mean, yeah, pledging support. I thought you meant like a support group for listeners who are traumatized I'm, by listening to this program uh i'm not sure which it is so it could be either uh okay. or if you're traumatized by the whole firearms radio network you, you can go to the firearms radio.tv slash pledge site and then you know there you go there uh if you're shopping amazon use our affiliate link at firearms radio.tv slash amazon and we are on to black bag resources with the simon says train free shipping code because anything used with that code will be donated to Tony and the 2A4E diversity shoot. And since Sean's actually here today, I don't know if he wants to put anything else in there or not. That's that's all I have ready for you. Okay, so that works. Donate to Tony. Uh, use that coupon code because uh, he's, he's running low. It's the end of the year, so he's got two more events so he could use some more goodies to go in swag bags and raffles and all those things. Uh, so please use coupon code Simon says train and support yeah, exactly for what, regular happens, diversity shoot. <clears throat> what happens at the end of the year in the industry, if people don't know, is they start gearing up for shot show at the end of the year uh, and pretty much everything dries, dries up. up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's really at the end of the year, everything dries up until after my first event of the year. So if, if people wonder, how come Tony doesn't give everything away? Because pretty much I have to save and, and keep something for those dry three or four shows that happen after the industry dries up, like October and February's events, and maybe even February. Yeah, a couple into the year before I start getting stuff in again. It is what it is. Well, help out if you can. We're still building that AR. Right now we got the barrel uh, from Faxon. We have a lure from... Uh, dang, I have it right here and I can't even think of it. Uh, damn, it's in my hand. The Alzheimer's Holland kicking died. in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have, we have the lower from that. So if you guys, and we have a bunch of pistol grips, so don't send any, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to send a hand guard, if you want to send uh, a bolt carrier group. Uh, hey, just help I, us out. I sent you a decent pistol grip. Yes, you did. A along with the A2 ones. <laughs> yes. You said a really cool aluminum pistol grip. <clears throat> yeah, so well, that brings us to the main topic and our I guess that's also what we did in firearms thanks to our buddy Zane who actually brought us a review unlike the host. So take it away Zane. <laughs> All right. I got my hands on one of the Gen 5 Glock 19s um, this week. And I am, full disclosure, a Glock fanboy. So there's that. But I did the best I could to do this as unbiased as possible. <laughs> all right. What? So, all right. So just to kind of run down what's different between this and the Gen 4, um, to start with, at the very nose of the gun if you will it has a, a beveled edge on the slide 
which is reminiscent of like the 26 size guns, the 26, 27, and 33 um, Glocks. Uh, I guess that's for ease of use for reholstering. I'm not sure it's for. It looks cool, although they did not match the frame to that little bevel, which is, if you're a perfectionist, is a little weird. Um, the slide is has a different type of coating, and I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called right now. Um, but I think they switched to DLC, isn't it? That sounds that could be yeah. right. It's it's like it's, in DLC. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be more durable. Um, I don't know about durability. I only got about 350, 400 rounds through the gun because it tried to rain on me. Um, but it is. I like the coating. The look of it is really nice. It's like almost blacker, if that makes sense. Like I know the Glock slides, all the gems are like that black color, but it's more matte. It's not as shiny. Um, it's, it's flatter, and I like it. Um, most notably, they removed the finger grooves. That was kind of a big deal for everyone. Some people like them. Most people I know do not. Uh, they added an ambidextrous ambidextrous or however you say it uh slide stop which admittedly i'm not a fan of but you know to each their own uh, and then they they flared out the magazine well which i was a little underwhelmed with at first but the more i shot it or the more i reloaded the gun the more it kind of grew on me um they have this little cut out out up front for ripping a stuck mag out we talked about this last week a little bit um they left the plug in the, you know, the, the cutout in the back. So you can really get two fingers in there good to rip a mag if you need to. On all my Glocks, I cut half moons into the side anyways for that. But out of the box, this one, you know, comes with that. So that's kind of nice. The trigger really surprised me on this. Um, the trigger is designed more like the Glock 4243. And it's, I think it's missing one of the retaining pins, basically. Um, but I found it to be much smoother than the Gen 4 uh, 17 I have and the Gen 3 26 I have. And uh, it was a little bit lighter than the um, 42 I used to have. So it's, it's, it's a really decent trigger. It has, so it, let's do it left handed so you can kind of see. It's, pushes real smooth through the break. There's not it's not nearly as spongy as I mean it's a Glock trigger, don't get me wrong. It feels like a Glock trigger. But to me it just felt a little smoother. Um the the take up is a little heavier, but once you get past the take up, it pushes through pretty smooth. Uh obviously tactile audible reset. No, it's a Glock trigger. Um like the Gen 4 the magazine release is reversible comes with three mags. It also comes with a cleaning brush and a um, a rod to put it on, which none of my Glocks ever have in the past. I don't know if that's specific to Gen 5s or if that's kind of a new thing they're using. Um, still comes with the plastic dovetail protectors that Glock calls sights. Uh, this one has already had them replaced uh, by the guy who owns this that I unfortunately I have to give it back to. Uh, and they did not put front cocking stations on the gun, and I'm not sure why. Um, I would have liked to have seen that. So, you know, I'm, I've got a full review almost done. By the time the podcast airs, it should be on the uh, website. But um, so eight key points. Claim to fame, it's a Glock. I mean, there's if you're not – if you don't know what a Glock is, I'm not going <laughs> to go over the whole history in one review. It's a Glock. Uh, it's – this is a 19, chambered 9 millimeter. Uh, it's been upgraded slightly, um, and it's just basically got a little facelift. Target market's going to be law enforcement, security, law-abiding citizens, um, anyone looking for a reliable pistol, um, especially lefties or wrong-handed folks because of the ambi slide release. And, of course, all the Glock fanboys like myself will be all over this. Uh, features and benefits. All right. It's got Glock reliability. Um, I assume, like I said, I only got about 350, 400 rounds through it. I had technically three malfunctions. That being said, they're all shooter-induced because of how I hold the gun. Where'd my mag go? I hold. I literally press my hand against the slide release, so I get failures to walk back quite often. 
and uh, I got that three times. But that's not the gun's fault. That's totally my fault. Um, other than that, I had no stovepipes, no double feeds, no failure to fire, no failure to ejects. And the gun, I literally took it out of the box and shot it. I didn't wipe the packing grease off. I didn't put oil on it. I just, just ran it uh, because that's what the guy who owned it wanted me to do with it. Um, got the more durable coating, lack of finger grooves, flared magwell, replaceable back straps, which is not a new thing, but it does come with that. And it now uses a traditional rifling instead of a, a polygonal rifling that Glock used to use. All right. So what other options or finishes are available? None. Comes in black. You can get 17 or 19 right now. Um, what others are saying, I still have to add all that in. Price point, this this one went for, I believe, 579 They're going between 550 and 600 everywhere. But the I need it now availability, I just simply put good luck. Um, everywhere I seem to be has is, is got a, a sign-up uh, pre-order for them. I haven't seen them in stock anywhere. Maybe by the time this airs, they'll start getting in stock, but I doubt it. Uh, the pros, it, it's, it's a Glock. It, it's a reliable gun. Uh, it's got a flared magwell, pleasing to shoot, smooth trigger, and it's just basically got a facelift. Uh, cons, there's still no front cocking serrations, which is something I'd like to see. The sights are absolutely terrible as they come out of the box, but those are easy to replace. And then I actually added a section. Instead of just pros and cons, I added uh, just uh, observations that depending on who you are could be a pro or a con, and that is the lack of finger grooves and the ambidextrous uh, slide release, because admittedly, I am not a fan of. I gave it a score of 8.5, but it was really hard to give it a number, so I put in parentheses slightly better than a Gen 4. Um, my bottom line on this is if I had to pick up a gun and carry it out of the box the way it came to me, it would be a Gen 5 Glock. If I got to send it off to have all my custom work done that I like, I'd probably go with the Gen 4 instead of the Gen 5. So, but I like it. And I cleaned dot torture with this gun um, this afternoon. So that's the first time I've ever actually cleaned that. So that's got to count for something, right? It, it means you can shoot a Glock, right? I've never cleaned it with my everyday carry, so <laughs> maybe, yeah, okay. maybe I need to get one. I don't know. Oh, the mags are a little different too. So you can see the difference there. Um, it's just a little more meat on the Gen 5s and the Gen 4s, but not well, a still. Well, the Gen 5 fit in the Gen 4. The Gen, I don't know. I don't have a Gen, um, I don't have a 19. Oh, I, okay. Now the Gen, the Gen Four mags will absolutely go into the Gen Five. I use both uh, Gen Four mags, seventeen mags, and the, obviously the Gen Five nineteen mags. And I used uh, the Magpul uh, twenty-one mags. All worked just fine. Nice, so, nice. Do you know? I I do have a. I guess I could see if it goes in my Gen Three twenty-six. That that's guy. not a 26 though is it no Isn't mine's it that... a 33 but it's, but it's <laughs> converted to shoot nine mil you're right i just i keep forgetting because i haven't shot 357 sig in about five years ever since you bought the gun because right. yeah because the box of ammo is like 60 bucks so. yeah but yeah that's pretty much it i mean it's it's a glock but you know like i said if i had to if I had to pick up a gun and carry it as it came from the box, with the exception of maybe replacing the sights, this would be it. It'd be a Gen 5 19. Um, well, but the thing is, is, it's Glock. The one option they do have is you can probably get it with Night Sights Factory you installed. Can, you can get it with Night Sights Factory installed. Um, I don't like Night Sights either. I like fiber front, blacked out rear. It's my but preference. At least, they're, at least they're metal. They're metal, and they won't break <laughs> off. This one has like a weird... This, this, the guy I borrowed this from, he likes these sights. It's like got like a weird half Novak cut and then they're like tritium and, um, fiber. They're tritium and fiber. Yeah. Um, but anyways, you know, nice. it's a Glock, but I, uh, I like it. So yeah. It's yeah, I, it, yeah. Like kind of like we said last week, uh, 
it's kind of, you know, if you're just buying a, you're a new gun owner or something and you just want something from the factory, you know, it's probably got little improvements that are probably worth a few extra bucks. So. I would have a competent gunsmith, you know, for legal purposes, probably Dremel off. I probably not Dremel, probably use a proper tool. Um, the starboard side uh, slide stop because either that or I'm going to, I would have to modify all my holsters because it, it catches a, it doesn't it it works but it it rubs on the holster give it uh, so give would, it a few days and somebody will come out with just a single oh yeah <laughs> yeah well what i yeah they'll probably come out with one but i would honestly probably just again have a gunsmith just take it out and cut Fill it, right it off yeah and it'd be it'd, be, it'd work fine um, you couldn't just that, take one out of a uh, previous he, generation, yeah. like a single, no, 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 not even a heat gun. On. I'm just saying, if you don't like that slide stop, can't you just switch it out for a standard slide stop? I, I don't know. I didn't tear the gun down that far. Um, I don't know if the slide stops are interchangeable between the uh, Gen 3 or Gen 4 and Gen 5s. Now, I'm sure someone will come out with an aftermarket one that doesn't have, like Chad was saying, that only has it on the port side. No, they're going to come out with an ambidextrous extended <laughs> well, they're going to do that too. I mean, I could do that, or I could literally just on this particular holster just cut this right here, and it'd be fine. Well, and you fi you figure when the holster makers start ramping up for the Gen Fives, they'll probably put it in all yeah. their holsters. So they'll they do it all of them for yeah. Gen Three, Four, Five, so they'll work for all of them. But I already yep. have about seventy nine holsters. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, maybe but you need another makers. one. The side stop off, won't it? Won't that little uh, divot catch or not? No, nah, I don't think so. I know guys who have done it on like Gen Three Glocks, cut them off because they don't use them. They, they you know overhand rack every time. So, and so yeah. I know guys who have actually done that. Like I use the the the, the slide stop, but I just and it, it 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 touches my. I just I just I just don't care for it. Um, you know. I know for a lot of lefties, it's going to be a big selling point, but I just, I don't care for it. Yeah, I would think a lot of lefties will like that option. And because it's a Gen 5, you can reverse the magazine drop and. Correct. You, you know, can switch out the mag catch. To yes. You decide. <clears throat> yep. So but that's, yeah, a, that's uh, kind of a plus. It's pretty nice. Like I said, I put about 450 or 350, 400 rounds through it. Um, Ran flawlessly. I mean, I cleaned dot torch with it. I, I couldn't even believe it. I was like, what's going on here? Like, I was already coming up with excuses before I even got to the range as to why. Like, oh, wow, well, it's not my gun. or like, Because I just knew I was going to do bad. But I didn't. He cheated. <laughs> no, I didn't. Cheated. I did not cheat. I promise. I shot, it a, I shot it at a honest three yards, and I did all the, the stuff properly, you know. I think if he cheated, he wouldn't have shown his previous ones that he shot with his gun. Exactly. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing that I can't no, this, clean it with my carry gun. But This whole thing was a sham. Off. He set it all up from the beginning. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> Glock got to him and paid him off to make the new Gen 5 look better than all the others. Listen, uh -huh. if Glock so, wants to pay me, uh, my email address is... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was checking out your picture that you have on social media. And I think I might have seen some powder burns on no. your paper. No. <laughs> no. 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 The burns were there when I when I hung the target. <laughs> yeah. That was actually burnt you're paper. You're confusing me with someone else. The the powder <laughs> burns were actually on the pickup in that video he showed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, okay. sweet shirt, man. Thank you. Yeah. I, like this, uh, <laughs> I just got it. I just got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's some. Um, what? No, the, t the, no, the second is for everyone he's black right now, not 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 the stupid one he's wearing in the video. Oh, I <laughs> yeah, that. not not tonight's shirt. I'm the only one wearing a cool shirt tonight. Yeah, well, there let's you see go. it, Chad. Oh, here you go. Oh God, put it away. There. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. put it away. No, I, I yeah. often I often video myself at the range just so I can. I don't go. I go by myself, so I like to video myself for the purposes of you know slowing things down and picking out things I might could do better. I'm doing wrong and stuff. And right, I was the bored, things you really so, want to look at and 
focus on and right and i got bored so i added a little dubstep <laughs> and some slow-mo and <laughs> a little bored yeah doing it for so, the gram baby doing it for the gram that's oh, yeah IG famous I'm trying to get that's some right. bunnies is it working no okay it's oh, not I totally watched it. <laughs> yeah, only... <laughs> yeah i watched it and loved it <laughs> Uh, so hey, is it me or did you sound kind of like Hickok Forty Five? You're shooting the gun. Oh, don't don't blame the gun. The gun didn't miss. I missed. Don't don't blame the gun. That's not the gun's fault. It jammed. Oh, the gun jammed again. No, not the gun's fault. Well, yeah, it's my fault. No, I I get that. I I have that with my with my uh seventeen that I carry. I get uh-huh. it actually quite more often. I get it with the twenty six. With the forty two, I used to have. It never locked back. I just knew after several rounds if I got a click. Instead of a bang, I didn't even tap rack. I just dumped the mag and went for a new one. Because no, it's I, funny. Cause it never the one thing I noticed it. watching the video, in addition to you, you know, trying to do your best to be a sexy model with Tony's shirt, was that you gripped the gun really freaking high. Like I don't think I've seen anybody grip the gun as high as you do. And recoil uh, management. Well, you know, if you got skinny little girly hands that can grip a gun that high, good for you. The rest <laughs> of us work for a living and have meat in our mitts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I, I do get high on the gun, and because of that, my support hand a lot of times will, will grab that slide stop and pin it down. And yeah, so I get if, it. if it makes you feel any better, I have a EA witness that it puts your hand, even mine, really high up, and I'll actually hit the slide stop once in a while with my thumb. So I, I can understand. I, I was shooting with a with some people one time, and I saw the exact that what you're talking about with a um, one of those Sig Mini 1911 things. I think. Oh yeah, the, one. yeah. Um, and when she would shoot every single time, she would either lock the gun open or engage the safety as the slide went forward. So mm, yeah. weird, it's, weird stuff happens, you know. Yeah, you know. Well, I think we we put the Glock Gen 5 to rest now, so we're on to yeah, the... Yeah, we don't <laughs> ever need to hear about it anymore. That's right. Y'all are just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> jealous. Well, haters, we just hate it. Okay, Forrest <laughs> Uh So we're on to the product spotlight. And first up, we have the Ruger American Ranch Rifle in 762... <laughs> Between it's seven six two Ruger by thirty nine, and you saying it was going to be reviewed. Tony hasn't stopped touching himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went number Why? three in my pants. Why, Tony? Why? <laughs> um, because you can own a jersey, right? Not only can I own in jersey, but it's one of my favorite cartridges because it's seven six two by thirty nine, which we all know I have the SKS. I like. The 762 by 39 in the SKS. Um, the what way kind of canopy do you have on your pickup? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's a Volvo. <laughs> it's a Volvo. Even better. It's a Volvo, because... and the canopy is made out of duct tape because it's a piece of junk. Aren't those, <laughs> aren't those pronounced <laughs> Volvos because, because of the language they're in? Oh, my gosh. Wait, is that Shut some up, kind of sweet. joke? Listen. I will cut you. <laughs> but, you yeah. gotta get the writing first. Believe me, depends on how hard the wind is blowing when this hurricane hits. I might end up there. <laughs> no, you won't, because you'll burn up before you get here <laughs> from all the fires. Nice, but the Ruger Amer- Ruger came out with the Ruger American Ranch rifle, and it's really built well, like the rest of their Ruger American stuff. You know, with the three-piece lug with the seventy-degree throw. And it throws out that 762 by 39 out of something that's really accurate that you can easily mount optics on. Um, now, I've shot my SKS out to 100 multiple times. I competed in with SKS shooting 50-yard groups. And I'm getting like four-inch groups with it, sometimes more, sometimes less. But that's it, using iron sight in the way the SKS is set up. Now, it's going to change once I get the saber tooth on because it has the optic rail and you can also forward mount scout stuff on there, scout optics. So I'm going to be able to see how good actually 7.62 is able to get. But with this Ruger American, I've seen people getting groups from with Hornady steel case from inch and a half 
two, one guy said his biggest group was like three, three, four inches. But that was with regular wolf steel case because it eats everything. It still uses their Ruger, what is it? The uh, Ruger Mini. The Mini 30. Mini 30. Mini 30, that's it. I, I was confusing it. Uses the Mini 30 mags. So you have five round, 10 round, and even 20 round mags you can use that are al already available. So if you live in a state kind of like mine that makes it a pain to have something with a pistol grip, but again, you like something like the SKS. Is that's it, is Zane. Zane trying to get no, Zane it's is not trying to get someone's loading. Somebody's loading mags. I'm not. I'm my God, I'm that's not. really annoying, Zane. You gotta stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we know for sure it's <laughs> it's Sean now. What a jerk. <laughs> yeah, but right now with Ruger setting this thing up, you can easily mount optics on it. And I mean, if you have again the Mini 30, you can have compatibility with your magazines especially if you live in a state where you can't have an AR or it looks too tactical. So, I mean, uh, I guess Chad can go ahead and read all of the cool things. Well, let's or see. I can. I don't care. You, you pretty much went over most of it. Yeah. Okay. And Way here's to the, the conversation. <laughs> oh, no. I've I'm never fine done with that, that before. Nope. All right, then it's had uh, the compact threaded barrel. Uh, it uses uh, oh, wait, five wait, wait, by 24 not... thread pattern. And of course, it you got to stop there. <laughs> you got to stop at the thread pattern. What's up? See, Ruger is great because they're making it for a 30 caliber suppressor. So, us people in these free states that can get those can put one <laughs> on this rifle. Now, Tony, can you, because this is a bolt gun, can you have a threaded barrel? It's only yes. on semi autos. I can have can. everything on a bolt gun. Okay. It's only it's on semi autos. Gun. You can't do. Okay. That's what I thought. I was wasn't sure. Yeah, because um, this is an assault rifle. Yeah, it, it'll be a sniper's rifle eventually. I was gonna say it's gonna be people. a sniper rifle eventually. Yeah, eventually. Well, this is this is this is what's funny to all the people that don't own assault rifles or pistols and they only hunt um, using rifles. That will become a sniper's rifle eventually after they get all of us. We've already seen it. We've already seen yeah. there was a, a kid who did show and tell with a 50 caliber um, uh, black Barrett? powder gun, and the news reported it as a 50 caliber sniper rifle. Yep. Oh, okay. so, that was about two years I mean, ago. Yeah, hey, get, aren't, get we supposed to aren't we supposed to stay out of these politics? Oh, yeah. No. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, we <laughs> talk about we get We get dragged into politics when you talk about guns. Oh, um, yeah. It's got a lightweight synthetic stock as always if you oh, know wait. about the Ruger American D rifles don't forget What's it's up? an FDE so yep it's mad tactical because it's an FDE I'm sure Ryan Cross <sighs> will eventually own one well um, I'm guessing, guessing Ruger now has their own version of FDE because as we know everybody else does yeah it's already yeah. Ruger um, Dark Earth <laughs> yep <laughs> <RD. Dark> Earth. <laughs> because uh, everything Ruger has to start with Ruger um Ruger marksmanship marksman adjustable trigger, uh, which That's is between plus. three and five pounds. That's actually a nice trigger. It, it's it's another decent. Yeah, it's actually a decent trigger. Um, what? Uh, oh, it's got the power bedding like all of the Americans do, so it's floated, and um, the soft butt pad is a hard one <laughs> in modern day, but nobody does. So, again, decent rifle, comes with one five-round magazine, comes with sling swivels. Um, I was reading up, and I was listening to everything you can find on it from the minute it came out. Ruger posted a video, and what they said, I don't know if you guys know this or you guys watched it. Um, this is from the guy from Ruger himself. When you start loading the 20-round mags, the first 15 load fine. But then when you start loading the last five, what happens is the rounds start to nosedive. Now, most people that have ARs, what you do is just tap the back of the mag. But with these, supposedly, he says you need to tap the front, it's tap the front of the mag really stiff in the palm of your hand or, or tap the bottom of the mag on a table or something, and those rounds will actually straighten up and pop into the mag like they're yeah, supposed it, to. I think it has to do with the curve uh, of the 7.62 yeah. by 39. But this thing is pretty cool because it's 36 inches overall length, so it's short. And weighs less than six pounds. I like the ranch rifle, the, the Ruger uh, American ranch rifle. <laughs> it's a really good rifle. Um, I kind of wish they would have gone with an AK pattern mag, but they didn't go like 
full retard and go with a proprietary mag. So that's, you know, that, no, that's good. Mini 30 mags are kind well, of proprietary. I think it's, well, yeah, but well, there's but, a lot of them out yeah, there. Yeah, but they already have them out there. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's an existing magazine. <laughs> it's already available all over the place. There are other companies that make them. You can get them in just about any capacity you want. And, yeah. you know, is it, would I prefer the AK mag? Probably. But at the same time, you know, and Tony and I were talking about this earlier, you, you get into tolerances. You got every right. MOOC on the planet making AK magazines. You're going to have fitment issues. They they can control all the, the micro minutia of tolerance stacking and everything else from the magazine to the rifle. And you know they're going to work. So reliability right. beats convenience uh, as far as that goes. And, I mean, truth, and be, again, truth be told, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the 7.62 by 39 round. I, I, to, if you have an AK or an SK... I, it makes sense to get this, but I'm just, it's not my favorite round, but I know a lot that of It's because you are a bourgeois capitalist pig dog. This is correct. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a in lot of guys face, really yes. like the round, though, so it's, it's smart of Ruger to bring it out in this. It's not, well, you know. The round is inexpensive. The round yes. still pretty much has the same ballistics as a 300 Blackout Supersonic or even a 3030. So it's still a great deer cartridge. It is what it is. Um... And, of course, this Ruger is set up to actually shoot steel case well. Uh, the guy from Ruger, of course, now understand this is Ruger talking about Ruger, but they said they loaded up wolf ammo and they put 10 rounds in around an inch and a half to two inch group. Again. <laughs> and and okay. let's be honest, I, how I listen- many guys can actually shoot an inch and a half? Like, <laughs> you know, you're going to have a guy out there that's like, oh, well, it's not subbing away, so... But like, how many people well, can actually shoot? Stop, that? stop with it because most people can actually shoot. I mean, excuse me, people can shoot with it using a bag, using bipods, and shooting off of a bench. Sure. But when you get out in the field, I mean, what's what's the point of inch and a half group? Can you hit what you aim at? You're not shooting groups, but um, it's it's a decent rifle, from what they say. Sean has a Ruger American. I have a Savage Axis, but it's all built on the same quality. They figured out between and produce stuff inexpensively and still get you a quality product. Again, like I always say, we're in the golden age of firearms development. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. That We're talking about using a Soviet cartridge and getting slightly over MOA. Yeah. I mean, That's this is going to be popular with – this is going to be popular with, uh, well, ranchers that are got, having problems with hogs and coyotes and, you know, things like that, something to hang in the back of the truck. And uh, cheap ammo, and you can pop. I mean, I'm sure you can take a hog or a coyote out to 200 yeah. yards, no doubt, with this. So, probably even a little further than that if you had good glass. Throw a decent lightweight, like one to four, one to six, something like that on there, and learn learn the bullet drop. Who 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 made that? We checked it out. Barris. Barris actually makes a bullet drop compensated, um, pretty much AR like one to something. I forgot what it was, but we talked about it months ago. You know what yeah, else you got put on the top the of one it? from primary arms too, right? There are so many people picks. making those nowadays. <laughs> yeah, like, so, I mean, there's a lot, they, they, it's really cool. Now, what we were talking, Sean and I were talking about earlier is this is Ruger's answer to the Mossberg MVP that uses right. AR mags and comes in 5.56. This is a lot less expensive than a Mossberg MVP. Uh, another company that makes 762 by 39 in a bolt action is uh, Ryan has one, a CZ, uh, was it 527 mm. in 762 by 39? The MSRP for this thing is, what was it? Uh, 599. Yeah, 599 for the retail. 599. We know it's Ruger, <laughs> so C- we know their retail is super it'll high. Be <laughs> yeah. It'll be a hundred to hundred fifty dollars less. Uh, the CZ runs about seven seven ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it runs like a hundred hundred fifty dollars over Ruger MSRP, and you know CZ will probably cost close to what the MSRP is. Uh, the Ruger mags are like thirty eight dollars. Uh, the CZ mag only comes in five, and it's like forty eight dollars. You know, one of the difference in something that's in the same ballpark is this. But CZ is really well made. And it's wood and steel furniture like you wouldn't believe, you know. But it's still, I don't think the uh, it's threaded for a suppressor, but it does have iron sights. Same caliber, so not it. not the same budget, quality. price point, quality. Yeah, you're, you're no. talking apples and oranges as far as the comparisons yeah. there. Right. 
the, yeah, the only I, thing comparable. They're, they're in different classes. <clears throat> yeah, same caliber, different class gun. And then Howa, they make one too, and it's around seven hundred dollars. Again, it takes only their five round mag magazine, uh, free floated front end, any rail, but whatever. And it comes with a scope, so already right. set up. So there are bolt action rifles out there. There's a market out there for the seven six two by thirty nine. It's not that crazy of a outlier. A lot of people into it. Again, inexpensive. Still 30 odd six and 300 blackout ballistics, and 300 blackout is the new hotness. But if you're shooting 300 blackout and you're not using subsonic, then pretty much you're getting this 762 by 39 ballistics. Yeah, well, I mean, it's Four it's a way to it's a way to get a 30 cal it's a 30 caliber round in the uh, in the short action, basically. I mean, yeah. It's, if yeah. you want a 30 <clears throat> caliber short action, I mean, I mean, yeah, short short action, not you know. Yeah, right. They, they call them action. Action. You know, and the big advantage to this thing is, is you can take a lot of, you know, decent sized game with this. Like, you can take probably any hog you want with it. You can use it for deer hunting. Yep. Uh, you could probably actually, depending on where you hunt and your range, you could probably use it for elk size game, uh, depending on how, depending on where you're at. I mean, you if you get a hundred, yeah, we're good shot placement. Yeah, you know. Right. Uh, well, there was. There was thing, a whole, <clears throat> go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, it comes with a scope rail, an actual Picatinny rail, which, unlike a lot of the Rugers that come with their weird Ruger mounting system, <laughs> uh, and Ruger rings. Right. This just comes with a rail. Uh, it, it does have a 16 inch barrel, but when you think about it, most 7.62 by 39 ammo is listed all the specs are for a 16 inch barrel anyway so you're probably going to get you might actually get better velocity out of a bolt gun than you will like an ak or something possibly yeah po well you also don't have any action that has to move into bolt action so yeah it's just every all the gas is behind that until you open action up um another thing is the way you drop the mag is push it forward like you do an ak paddle um, I was looking at the Hawa and their actual magazine releases in front of the magazine and you pull it back to drop the mag in your hand. Really weird placement. Um, I don't know. I'm, it's really decent. It's really cool. I kind of sort of want one just because. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things that I can't really justify. I just want it. You have to justify buying a gun? No. Uh, yeah, I have other responsibilities. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, married. I, well, I, I got stuff going on. I just choose to ignore them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like it. I'd prefer it, me personally, in, in 5.56, but that's just because I shoot ARs and I have that cartridge laying around. Um, Don't they have this in 5.56? I'm they sure have they offered it. I'm oh, yeah. sure they offered in that. Um, but, well, Ruger yeah. American? Good God, they offer it in everything. Yeah. yeah, they offer it in everything. That's what I'm saying. So <clears throat> it, it's, it's a bunch of different calibers. Why not? Um, it's just another one. Again, it's very versatile, especially if you start hand loading 7.62 by 39, because there are people now more, and you can just tune this rifle like nobody's business because it uses like a, what, 0.311 caliber bullet. So that's a lot of those around there. Hornady has their steel case, which is pretty damn accurate uh, for 7.62 by 39. Actually, I might pick up some of that just to shoot it to see what it's like in this because I've used the 7.62 by 54R from Hornady. And it was accurate than some of, not all of, but some of my surplus. Because I was able okay. to use that Mosin and get, I was able to get two inch groups with a Mosin at one, my Fen Mosin using um, Bulgarian ammo, I think. So uh, all surplus okay, ammo is not inaccurate garbage. But they offer in the in the main categories or calibers. Yeah. Five five six, so, seven hey. six two by thirty nine, four fifty Bushmaster, Ooh. and then two two three NATO five five six and three hundred blackout. Mm hmm Four fifty Bushmaster yeah. would be a hog killer right there. You could punch <laughs> no. big holes, baby, big holes with four forty five seventy ballistics. That would be close, a, yeah. so cool pretty much you can go have. buffalo hunting. Buffaloes. Yep. And you know what you can put okay. on the top of it, don't you? I do. 
You know what would be excellent to put on top of this? Maybe a vortex, a vortex one, one to eight. eight. A vortex strike eagle one to eight that they just came out with. That would be the excellent. Calibrated for the five five six round. Ah, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's seven six two by thirty nine. So, you know, past two hundred yards, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, next up on the list is the strike eagle by vortex. They're offering a one to eight in it now. With the MSRP, the basically five sixty nine ninety nine. So uh, I think kind of like Ruger Vortex has their MSRP is pretty high. So you might be able to find it for you know five hundred easy, but probably a little less. And I know it's their Strike Eagle line, so it's not their high highest quality line, or not really quality, but highest the price. Correct. Uh, but they do offer it now in a one to eight. Uh, the features, you know, it's one to eight adjustable. It is a 30 millimeter tube. Uh, basically, it's half MOA adjustments. And it does come with the, it weighs about a pound. It does come with their AR556 reticle or whatever they want to, what do they call it? The, BDC2 AR reticle, which basically is kind of a horseshoe reticle with a dot, and then it has hash marks for probably two, three, four, and five hundred. Yeah, the reticle's yards, kind of busy, it looks like. but it's kind of and, but it, and it is illuminated. So and what there's, that's a plus. Use? <laughs> oh, uh, let me see. I didn't check oh that. What kind of battery does it use? Oh, you know what it uses. <laughs> oh, my God. Ew. Oh, my God. Oh, it uses a 2032 battery. Imagine that. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. battery of <laughs> you know what? It, it, oh. you can actually yeah. store extra batteries in the in the right side turret. Oh, even yep. better. Yeah, it, stores a, it stores an extra battery in the window turret. Yes, Gerd, yeah. Ma, Gerd, Becky, extra battery storage. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. In, case, in case you've never heard this show before, Chad loses his net over batteries. <laughs> oh, yeah, batteries are so sweet. Especially 2032 batteries. Oh, yeah, they're the best. They're small, <laughs> you know. Brown, Powerful. Wait, we're talk- Wait, we're talking about batteries, right? Yes. <laughs> They're the same size as the buttons on my shirt, and uh, I really like them. <laughs> Who the hell you have has buttons on their shirt? <laughs> the buttons on your shoes. Chad still has buttons on his shirt. <laughs> Chad's got buttons on his shoes because he was a Puritan, and he had them when he came in on a Mayflower. <laughs> what do you mean? He didn't have buttons on shoes then? <laughs> He's finally broken them in. They're soft now. Yeah. Uh, so... Basically, those are the specs, but I don't know what you guys want to say about this. I'm really liking that it's an actual 1 to 8 power. Uh, I mean, a a lot of companies are bringing 1 to 8s out. You know, they started with 1 to 4s, went 1 to 6s. Now they're on to 1 to 8s, which, you know, for us old people like Tony, uh, (laughs) the more power you can get, yeah, yeah, the, the better. Uh, so yeah. basically, um, it looks pretty sweet to me. I've used their one to six. I've used their one to six Strike Eagle, and then I think I've used their one to eight uh, Razor. That's the very high, the high end yeah. of their AR scopes. And that thing, <laughs> it's clearer than my actual vision. My vision right. improved. <laughs> it has like light <laughs> gathering ability. <laughs> And I saw better. I saw tomorrow when I looked through their high end scope. Don't you um, hate it when you look through a scope that's that good that it actually improves your vision? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was like, whoa. Wow. And that, it was done on a uh, Leonidas upper uh, through shooting, suppressed Leonidas upper shooting 300 blackout at the machine gun shoot and um, singing. But then I checked out the one to six strike eagle. It's good. It's a solid scope. Um, I was looking, you know, looking into this, seeing what was comparative. This weighs like an ounce more, I think, than their one to six strike eagle. 
and it's like an inch or a couple of inches longer. Um, I was watching, I was listening to a review by one of the guys and he compared the two and his, his comparison was, he said he was able to get the one to six for like 240. And he said he was able to pick this up for like 400. And he said for that extra two magnification, he said he kind of has a little buyer's remorse because really that extra two magnification, he's a three gunner. He shoots three guns. He's like, it didn't really help him out much. But I mean, to each his own, how much money do you have? It, again, you got the different magnification. You got the different BDC. Um, it is a busy, a more busy BDC than the one to six. The way the one to six looked. I don't know if you looked at it, Sean. It was uh, Sandra Muldoon had one when we were doing that instruct the instructors thing over in Easton. No, I don't know if you looked. Like I, okay. I peeked at it. I didn't shoot it or anything. I put some rounds through it, and I really liked how the one to six was set up. And I started looking at this one to eight, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of sort of don't like it. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the, they have the bullet kinda, drop compensator flipped around differently on it. Got the and, it's got the better. <laughs> it's got the better. <laughs> yeah, actually, I approve. I like the one to six reticle better, also, but. It's still kind of busy, so you know the reticle they have now. It's still very similar in the one to eight, but I guess it's I, personal I, preference. I, I, I like it. This this might be the optic to push me over the edge to go from a red dot to an LPVO. Um, yeah, I mean, because I've been wanting one for a while. But I really kind of wanted the one to eight, and I want to break the bank. But I don't know. I like it. I may end up I don't, one of these up. I don't think you're going to get the super super clear glass. But I mean, it's a vortex. It's not like the glass is super terrible on their right. on their but base I mean, I'm ones. A vortex not at all. Spitfire wed dot. I think right now. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and then my right. my hunting my hunting rifle has a. Uh, a uh, Simmons uh, on it, and it's about clear as mud to look through. So yeah, I was gonna say you can actually see uh -huh. something through it. <laughs> no, it's better than his Tapco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his okay. Tapco. Tasco, Tasco. Oh, I'm no, sorry. no. See, I miss, I misspoken it. If, if you go with Tasco, you have to, you have to go before they moved to China. When they were in Japan, mm. they were okay. Well, here's the funny thing about <laughs> here's the funny thing about Vortex Strike Eagle though. It's made in China too, but this is what Vortex does that a lot of companies don't do. They have their QC guy in the plant in China, and if it Ex stinks, it never comes into America. Exactly, and that's the big difference. If you make stuff in China, as long as you have quality control, then it's okay. And as we all know, Vortex has the best warranty. You know, if you're going to drive over it with your truck, like, or shoot it like Tony might, I don't know. Uh, then what if you have a cap on your truck? <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a yeah. drag it behind your truck reference. Mm. Ooh, that's true. That's Maybe true. We do that. Yeah, drag it behind my truck with the canopy. With the canopy on it you, and the Mosin in it. That's what you can do, though. Depends on where that storm hits. You can drive it through water, dragging it behind your truck because it's nitrogen filled. <laughs> and then and you can make a water skiing. And then you can send it to the northwest, and we can put it in. We can throw it in the fire and see what happens. Actually, what was with what's going on? At least it's something that might not fog over and start leaking when you have to hold off wherever you Ooh. are in inclement yeah. weather. Because guess what? That's everybody wants to joke about, you know, poop hitting the fan or all of that. Well, it's no great mystery. This is hurricane season, and this stuff is coming. And if you have an optic as your home on your home defense firearm that won't hold up to this, guess what happens on what might be the worst day of your life? Yep. The crap just fogged over, or you know, even with your more expensive thing fogged over, and you realize it's not all it's cracked up to be. Well, and, and this storm coming at us ain't a joke either. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, you know. We, we like to talk in the firearms community like we're ahead of everybody else. 
but a lot of people just have their gear because that's their favorite gear and it might not be quality gear or might not hold up to actual conditions. Cool to have all the cool latest stuff on your gun, but if it can't really hold up to everyday use until the rule of law gets back in place, there's, how long did it take after Katrina? Two weeks? Three weeks? There, for cops to actually for, come from all over the country and volunteer to help out? Well, those were you the ones that on weren't kicking indoors, take, confiscating guns, though, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, there, there's a meme that I see floating around. Everyone's like, Are you you're familiar with the, the, the Japanese general who said they would never invade the mainland? There'd be a rifle behind every blade of grass. Yeah. So oh, there's a meme yeah, that never happened, but. Well, there's a meme I keep seeing floating around that says behind every blade of grass would be a, a three percenter trying to get his budget rifle to work. Yep, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. I said it. Good, he should say it. Man. I said it. He should say it. <laughs> if you have your firearm and you, and you haven't ran a lot of ammo through it, which is a lot, which to some people 500 rounds is a lot, it isn't. Nope. That's that's a one day class. I got five hundred rounds through this Glock in one day, damn near. Yeah, you gotta you gotta know your gear. All that stuff my daddy taught me to shoot. My granddaddy, the Navy Seal, ostrich rider, fossil slogan, whatever, whatever bull crap people always say taught them to shoot. They didn't teach you to fight with your gun. Door you probably, yeah, exactly. And you probably haven't put a thousand rounds through your gun. Shoot your gun. Because when the time comes to use your gun, you better have confidence in it and not that false bravado that you post up on Instagram and, and Facebook. And stop lying about how much you shoot on the interwebs oh. because we oh know there was a guy got on the YouTube comments ta <laughs> talking this, about. Well, this I'm is going to be good. good. This is going to be so good. Through my, through my Sigma 40, XD. I've never had a single jam. I'm like, you guys you're just know his XB. His fears. Right, yeah. I'm like, you're lying. No, you don't. Dude said, dude came on James Jaeger's uh, video and Name said he had, he had 30,000 rounds through a 40 <clears throat> caliber XD and he's never cleaned it and it never had any stoppages. Right. Look, 15,000 rounds is spring life on pretty much any pistol. Like, I don't care what gun you're using. At 30,000 rounds, you got parts wearing out. Bad. Uh, I got I got bad news for you. Your Glock, <laughs> your, 3, your Glock rounds is... to 5,000 rounds, depending on generation. Mm -hmm. I, I, need a, I need a spring <laughs> in my 17. Um, it's, it's, it's right there at about the 7,000 round mark, and it, I, can, I can feel a difference. It's yeah, time. you're 2,000 rounds overdue, but... Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> But He's gonna oh, shoot yeah. it until it breaks. There was that that same in that same thread, Tony. There was another guy came in talking about his Sigma had eighty thousand rounds to it later on. <laughs> oh, get out! And I'm like, dude, oh, get shut up. up, get out! <laughs> mm, I I just now tell me. it's funny because my high point has had three thousand rounds to it. You mean um, thirty thousand? Um, three hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I've shot up all the 40 on the East Coast. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it, it's really held up well. It works fine. But even according to them, yeah, it's time to change out the springs and uh, the mm -hmm. recoil uh, rod. And it, it's called firearm maintenance. Now, right. if you're going to shoot your gun and never clean your gun, I, I would suggest you don't depend your life on that scientific experiment you're running on your firearm. That's not right. something you should bet your life on. That's just something you're running and checking that's, out, and that's your range gun. That's well, the other thing that makes no, no damn sense to me. Makes no sense whatsoever. This is my go-to-war gun, and I don't ever clean it. Good. You are going to lose that war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, you we, we change the oil in your vehicles. You get your tires rotated. You, you, you do a tune-up. You know, I don't clean my guns nearly as often as I probably should. You're speaking I, a foreign language to Tony. I, I re-oil. I, I oil my What was this about off. rotating your oil and changing yeah. your tires? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I, I oil the gun. I put fresh oil on about once a month, and every six months I give it a thorough cleaning. I don't clean it like I probably should. But, you know, I check it once a week, make sure there's no, you know. I, I don't know. I just these people that are, anyways, I'm done. I'm out. No, but. So, no, go ahead, it, Matt. Great job. <laughs> no, go ahead. Because we're here for really? you, Zane. You listen. You've got another twenty minutes left in your session. 
<laughs> what are we Talk supposed to, to call friend. him Tony now? <laughs> just just process this the whole way through you know if you want to talk about your relationship with your mother or <laughs> anything else that's been really wearing on your nerves hey, yeah. hey we don't the, we don't do that kind of dream. hold on talk about your dreams about actually wanting to be guest in Glock's love child <laughs> <laughs> let us know <laughs> hey man Glock Glock, my daddy they were <laughs> so, so do you think this vortex will fit on that Glock? <laughs> Sean, That's a hell of an uh, armor cut. Sean from Daylight <laughs> Shooting has a vortex uh, strike fire on a high point. Yeah, but that's not yep. that's not, not a, a strike one eagle one to eight. Well, I think that he needs to up his game. So maybe Tony needs to up his game. Tony needs to one up Sean. And put the, the the strike eagle on. The Which one of you is going to buy the strike eagle for? You know what? Because I know he ain't part <laughs> yeah, of the money. Yeah, get, get, yeah, you know darn well I'm not. Uh, I, I'm thinking about calling uh <laughs> calling up calling up High Point though because you know they have that Picatinny rail adaption that mm -hmm. you can put on to mount a red dot or a scope onto your High Point pistol. Yeah, yeah. you need that for this scope. Game on. <laughs> If you want to actually tip the scale over the five pound mark with your high point pistol, <laughs> <laughs> put that huge rail adapter no. on it and then smack a one and a half pound scope on. Top. No, all you have to do is load the magazine to tip it over the five pound mark. <laughs> you can load it. It's a single stack. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> it already weighs 4.9 pounds. Hey, Sean. Sean, when we got the high point to, you, to the house, Mm -hmm. It weighed more than your Glock 22 with two loaded magazines, right? Glock 22, or yeah, the Glock 22 fully loaded weighs less than the empty high point. Yes, it does. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, Only men's men so, use high points. <clears throat> so I guess we killed the Strike Eagle, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. We oh, went yeah, off, on, Eagle, we went off on a tangent there. Strike but... Eagle. But I'm gonna I, I might get one of these. I don't know. I might throw it on my uh on my colt. The, the thing it, is, it, is it, these types of optics, I mean I have a one to six from a, a competitor of theirs. And really they're nice. I I mean, especially for what they are, you get a true one power. Uh if you're blind like Tony and I or have astigmatism, because they're an etched reticle, you can see them clear. Uh, yeah. that's always a plus. Yep. Uh, you know, they're easy to adjust once you, if you want to shoot a far target farther out, you know, you just crank the magnification up. It's nothing complicated. So really for what they are, they're kind of a good universal optic. I mean, does, does this one have, I didn't see what I was, I just clicked off the website. Does this one have a, a decent throw lever? You can I add a throw lever. throw lever. No, you can add a throw lever to it though. They have their own because I looked into getting the one to six strike eagle. I checked out everything about it, and I think it's like thirty forty bucks for that throw lever that goes on it. Um, I like these because they used to just have a red dot and then a like three X magnifier that goes on the back of it, and one flips to the side. And now you have all this. You have one to six, one to one to four, one to six, and one to eight. You don't yeah. need to throw level in the red dot. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I was never interested it's like, in a oh. flip out magnifier ever. When they first came out, I was just like, nope, that is not for me. Um, I'm like, that's a lot of moving stuff on your gun, man. The line up and the throw the three X magnifier costs as much as the red dot. It's yeah. like no. <laughs> just no. <clears throat> yep. I, I hear you guys. Okay, no listener feedback. Are we surprised? Do we have get some next week? We <laughs> we did. We well, we, got we, we had your your fanboy give us some feedback. Oh, Cody. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Cody called. So, obviously, Kim, Kim, Kim whoever she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's the, who's this Kim chick? Maybe she can leave us some feedback. Uh, so got, it's time for Tony to talk up his. Second is for everyone diversity shoot. 
Second is for everyone. Diversity shoot just uh, landed a second location in New Jersey shooting center in Lakewood, New Jersey. Uh, we're going to be there on October 18th. Uh, the week ahead, or what is that? A couple of weeks before that, we're going to be October 5th at Gun for Hire. So Gun for Hire range on October 5th. State Shooting Center on October 18th. So this is the second location, which is awesome, in New Jersey. If you want to um, check it out, you can go on Second is for Everyone Facebook page. You can follow Simon Says Train on Instagram. I realized last week when I was talking about this, some people might not know what the Second is for Everyone actually is. Second is for Everyone is a Second Amendment workshop that I hosted these ranges to actually welcome people from every background, black, white, gay, straight, uh, no matter your religion, your political preference, because all we talk about is Second Amendment at these events. I realize a lot of gun owners, even though they own a firearm, they're not politically active and they don't even know groups in their area. So what I do is bring Second Amendment groups in, like um, CNJFO in New Jersey, which is the uh, was it, Coalition of New Jersey Firearms Owners. And they talk about what they do. I bring in the NRA ILA and introduce them. And these are your representatives that do the political side of the NRA. I mean, a lot of people just don't know who these people are, don't know what the groups do, or have never met any of them. And they go, well, how can you represent us if you never show up in Jersey? Well, they show up. So we're going to probably have an NRA ILA rep at both gun for hire and the garden state shooting center. And because one's in North Jersey and one's in South Jersey, well, we have a rep one for each of those places. We have a different rep. So hopefully if it works out and we can schedule it, we'll have these guys there to speak to you. I also give away a lot of swag. We have raffle prizes where we give away really cool stuff. I'm going to probably give away a couple two, a four E shirts, which you pretty much can't buy anymore. <laughs> Also working on something else with Texas Relief with my friend. Um, I'm going to try to help people out there. A friend of mine, Dan Ingram from New Jersey Concealment Furniture, is actually auctioning it on custom furniture. Mm -hmm. And he's going to use the money from that, the funds he gets from that, to actually buy supplies and drive down to Texas and help rebuild for two weeks. He's going to be working down there. So right now he's... Um, has this auction going at concealment dot co. It's weird. It's not dot, dot co. Conceal dot co. So go there, check out what he does, look at his quality product, and see if you want to help out. He also, what are, what are those wooden things with the Texas uh, map? He, I mean, he's the, just the doing wall Texas. hanger plaques. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty neat. It, you know, and it's it's all just, Yeah, go ahead. Dan's a good guy. Um, he's a real Second Amendment advocate. He's a small business owner. Uh, uh, just check out his channel, New Jersey Concealment. You can check him out on Instagram. He has pretty much that name everywhere. He makes real quality, real quality products, not like some places that make stuff <clears throat> to, to conceal your firearms or anything you want in boom furniture. And um, he puts his money where his mouth is. He volunteers a lot, Second Amendment-wise. He takes a bunch of people out shooting, and he's always working. Decided to take two when Dan weeks says off. he's working a half day, he means 12 hours. Yeah, that's, that's his half day. Yeah. <clears throat> the cool thing about meeting gun people when you go to events like uh, the diversity shoot is you meet salt-of-the-earth human beings like Dan, like Sean like the people that go out of their way to help with these events because they want to make a difference. The way we're going to grow the second amendment is to get women, to get minorities, to get gays. We need to go from the old dude who just hunts and uses only the 1911 and a bolt action. And we need to get little special snowflake princesses like Zane who only know how to use a Glock and an AR 15. We got to get them involved politically. We got to get them to get guns, the girl. Man. They're good guns. Yeah, they, <laughs> we got to get Zane. <laughs> we got to get Zane to come out with his friends. We got to get the gay guy has been intimidated by this to come out and actually shoot and realize second is for him too. We have to make this community grow while we have a political environment that does not openly hate us. Um, 
And in New Jersey, we'll never have that. So we have to make it grow here, but we have to make it grow across the country. We're the last holdouts. We're the last country you can go to that actually has a second amendment. And we have to build that. We have to take this time to build it while the NRA is supposedly friendly to new gun owners. We got to make sure they are by loading their people like Tim Knight and Adam Kraut, who actually have our best interests in mind. And we got to put in work as gun owners. We can't sit on our butts and go Trump's in and we're going to win. Time to buckle down and get some mileage out of this. That's my rant. You can check out 2A4E's web pages at diversityshoot.com or the second is for everyone.com. Hope to see you guys on my page. And uh, thanks a lot as always. Yeah. Nice plug, Tony. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate everything you're doing. Even if it is in Jersey, uh, trying to get it, trying to get <laughs> everybody out. That, that's pretty cool. So send your questions or comments to gun gear review at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. That way we can have feedback and we can post it. Uh, check out all the other f- shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. Be sure to visit the Firearms Insider for review and industry coverage. Check out us on Facebook at Firearms Insider and follow us on Instagram at Firearms Insider. And we are out. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>